Hi, let me introduce you to this uh, new course, uh, Conquering Git. My name is Ignacio Calo, and I will be your teacher for the next uh, four hours. I currently live in Berlin, where I work for a company of the eBay group as a US developer. For this reason, my daily job is to write Swift code for iOS, but I really enjoy writing code in any language. I started around 20 years ago writing a Visual Basic code, but then I moved into C, then Java, PHP, Ruby, and of course now Swift. I still remember when I was used to use a zip file as a version manager to save the folder with the date as a zip file, but then I moved for a while into the SVN tool that was like not so great. And then luckily starting from 2010, I switched to use Git only. I like being in contact with you guys and getting feedback. So if you have any feedback or any question, anything that is not clear on this course, please drop me a line to this address that you can see now on the screen or go to my GitHub profile and send me a message there. Let's talk now about the course. This course is about four hours long and it's divided in the 13th section. Each section has a topic and most of the time this topic is to one git subcommand. For example, the first section is about the stashing. So we will learn there how we can stash, how we can work with stash, multiple stash and everything that we need to know about stashes. Then we will go to the section number two and there we will see how the git branch subcommand works. So we will see there how we can create a branch, how the branch are saved into the file system, everything that is related to the Git branch. Of course, after the branch, we need to merge. And therefore, on section number three, we will talk about the merge. We will see how we can apply different strategies during the merge to avoid conflict. We will see also as well how we can sign a merge using the GPG software. Not everything is done via terminal, right? We have a powerful machine with a nice UI, so we also have uh, UI tools. And in section 4, we will talk about the UI tools. We will talk about the Git K, and as well we will see Git GUID. On section number 5, we will talk about the diff format and how to solve the conflict. On section number 6, we will talk about the rebase command. So we will see the difference between a rebase and a merge, and we will also have a deep focus on the interactive rebase. Section number seven is dedicated to the git tag command. We will see the difference with a normal tag and an annotated tag, and as well we will see how the tags are stored into the file system. One repository sometimes is not enough. Therefore, on the section number eight, we will talk about uh, managing sub-projects. We will see the two approaches that are possible with Git. One is the sub-modules, and the other one is the sub-tree. The section number nine is one of my favorite sections. In this section, we'll talk about the Git hooks. That is, this nice functionality of Git that allows us to write the script in any language, and execute those scripts when something happened into the repository. The section number 10 is dedicated to the git bisect command. We will see how easy it is to find the right commit using this command, and we will also see how we can automatize this process of writing a script. In section number 11, we will talk about the git flow, because creating branches into the repository is easy, but it can create a mess if you create too many branches. With git flow, we have some rules that we can follow that make some order into the repository. Section number 12 is dedicated to git administration. We will see in this section how we can keep our repository nice and clean using the garbage collector. We will see how we can create a remote git server. And as well, we will see how we can restore branches that we deleted by mistake. The last section, the section 13, is dedicated to git breast practices. I will show you there how I personally work with Git, so my person alias, for example, and as well how you can improve your Git experience with additional tools and additional online services. After this course, you will be able for sure to better understand how Git works under the hood, the real model that is behind this tool. And all the main commands like stash, branch, merge, rebase, diff, all those commands will have no more secret for you. 
you will be able to add the subroute project to your repository. You will be able to create a scripts that then you can use either as a git hooks or a rebase script. And you will be able to extend your Git experience with external tools and service. What are the prerequisites of this course? I assume that you have a basic knowledge of Git because I consider this course an advanced course. It's not important to be a Git professional user. It's okay if you just know how to use Git using a UI tool, for example, that is totally fine. But during this course, I will not explain what does it mean to create a commit or what does it mean to add a file to the stage area. Additionally, I will use my terminal for the most part of this course. So if you want to get the most out of this course, you need to be not scared about the terminal. Why you should watch this course? I remember one guy say, Git is fairly simple. You memorize a couple of commands, and when something goes wrong, you just reclone the entire repository. I completely disagree. I think that we, as a developer, we use Git every day, and we need to treat Git as the tool that we use every day. It's like writing Java code and do not know IntelliJ, or writing Swift and do not know Xcode. If we rewrite code, then we need to know Git. And with this course, you can bring your knowledge about Git to a next level. And then this is one of the few courses that really start from branch to stash. Sorry for the joke, but it's true. This course is very complete, and with one single course, you can learn everything that you need.